In show business, or really any business, they don't come much bigger than Dwayne Johnson. He's the highest paid actor in the world, according to Forbes, and his worldwide movie totals are counted in the billions. We're here to negotiate your peaceful surrender. Heard about at least three kills this afternoon. I'm not peaceful. And now, in a new film, Johnson wants to be the next big superhero. These powers are not a gift, but a curse. In the DC Comics Outrage. universe, Black Adam is a prisoner turned violent demigod out for revenge. Do you consider him a villain? At times I do. Well, I consider him an anti-hero, but it's like reading the Bible. It's interpretive. <laughs> <laughs> And it's a role that seems to fit him like, well, a skin-tight superhero suit. I kneel before no one. But it seems that Dwayne Johnson's real superpower just might be his humility. An only child, Johnson had the humblest of beginnings. His dad, Rocky Johnson, was a pro wrestler back in the days when road trips were long and money was tight. So you guys were nomads, basically. We, we were nomads. We had that life up until I was 16 years old. We lived on the road. And I had spent a lot of my time growing up in the backseat of a car. He went to college on a football scholarship, but injuries and bad luck eventually sent him back home, defeated, with only seven bucks to his name. Years later, he'd name his production company Seven Bucks Productions as a reminder of where he started. But in the mid-90s, he turned to wrestling as a way to pull himself out of poverty. If Flex Nevada loses, he's out of the USWA. Oh, hey. Announcers need your wrestling name. You got one yet? On his autobiographical sitcom, yeah. Young Rock, Johnson Flex. recounts how he started wrestling at WMC-TV in Memphis under the name Flex Kavana. I'm working in Memphis, and man, it was a grind. Eight shows in seven days, week after week. I got some Miller highlights. Let's celebrate. Nice. And how a friend named Downtown Bruno gave the broke future superstar a place to stay in his rundown trailer. It turns out the trailer park in Walls, Mississippi is still there. Bruno, come here, man. And so is his old friend, Bruno Lauer. Finally, the rock has came back to Walls, Mississippi. <laughs> Their old home was pretty much as they'd left it, too. Just watch your step, everybody. Yeah, be careful with no stepping worries. backwards. Yeah. I didn't wear my heels for this portion. And I haven't been here since then. You've not been back. No, this is the first time back, so it's bringing back a lot of memories. What are you thinking? Um, Tracy, I'm so grateful. Grateful to have a friend like Bruno. Grateful to have the opportunity that I had. And, you know, life is just so amazing. It can be, you know, just truly. Talk about amazing. Dwayne Johnson went on to be a huge success in the wrestling world as The Rock. In 2001, he made the jump to film. And after some early success, Hollywood tried to mold him into a typical leading man. They said, okay, great, but now here's what you have to do. You have to stop working out as much. You have to lose weight. You can't call yourself The Rock. You can't talk about wrestling. Let's stay away from all that. These are all the things they told you. Don't be this anymore. No, that's right. So I tried that, Tracy. I tried getting smaller, losing weight. It all felt wrong. And once you started being yourself. That was it. When that happened, a funny thing happened. Hollywood conformed around me, and years later, I'm sitting here with you. So while he can bust up the big screen bad guys, he can also sing in an animated Disney feature. I know it's a lot, the hair, the bod, when you're staring at a demigod. And he can be funny, or at least try to be. You know, before this, I used to work in an orange juice factory, but I got canned, couldn't concentrate. He also owns a wide array of businesses, among them Terramana Tequila, and it's no secret he likes to drink it as well as sell it. Enjoy your mom. But Dwayne Johnson says his favorite role is dad to his three daughters. His two younger girls are often seen on his Instagram page. So you really enjoy those tea parties? Tracy, <laughs> I love them. And that's the kind of thing that seems to make the public love him all the more. 
In fact, he's been talked about seriously as a presidential candidate. A 2021 poll showed nearly half of voters would pick him for the White House. It's even something he and Tom Hanks joked about a few years back when Johnson hosted Saturday Night Live. That kind of sounds like you and me. I guess we got to do it. Come on, Johnson. Let's go. Let's go. We're doing it. But when we asked, Dwayne Johnson told us that a run for the White House was, was not, not going to happen. Is running for president off the table now? It's off the table, yes. <laughs> it is off the table. I will say this, because it requires the B side to this. I love our country and everyone in it. I also love being a daddy. And that's the most important thing to me, is being a daddy. Number one, especially during this time, this critical time in my daughter's lives, because I know what it was like to be on the road and be so busy that I was absent um, for a lot of years in my first daughters growing up in these critical age at this critical time in her life and that's what the presidency will do so my number one priority is my daughters sure CEO sounds great but the number one thing I want to be is daddy that's it heroes don't kill people well I do so sure, he can play a hulking superhero, no problem. But in real life, the only thing bigger than Dwayne Johnson's muscles, other than his ambition, just might be his heart. If Black Adam is fueled by rage today, what are you fueled by? Oh, that's a good question. You've been saving that one. <laughs> that's good. If Black Adam is fueled by rage, I am fueled by passion. I'm fueled by passion. I run to everything I do. Yeah, especially my daughters. So I would say that. I'm fueled by passion. <clears throat> and tequila. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see when you look at your girls? Um, I see love. When I see my girls, I see love. Especially my young ones. With my older daughter, in a way we grew up together. I had her when I was 29 and I was still trying to figure my life out and what it is, I was on the road. I was doing everything that I could possibly do to be the best dad that I could be. But I was on the road and I was gone and that schedule of wrestling is 275 dates a year on the road, different city every night. It was hard. It's hard on a relationship. It's hard on a marriage. And it's hard if you're a parent and you got a baby and you got young ones. So we kind of grew up together. Um, but with my young ones, now I have them years later. I have a little bit of experience underneath my belt. My, I think my um, emotional toolkit is a little bit more sharp <laughs> than it was. So with my little ones, uh, yeah, I, I see love. All my daughters, I see potential. And it's really, when I look at my girls, uh, you know, and I'm a proud girl dad, um, I just see really the beauty and the grace of God. And just the good Lord and this universe blessing me. You have granted tons of wishes. Mm -hmm. What's the best part of being famous? The best part of fame is making people feel good. What that, do you mean by that? Sure. When people see you, they have a variety of reactions. They are in shock. They can't speak. This is set up, by the way, to make me sound. <laughs> Here's what happens when people see me, okay? Let me clue you in. But I've actually seen the video, so they, you're, you're actually right. I know it sounds like a humble brag, but it's true. There's, there is, there's a lot of emotions that happen. So in this moment, I have an opportunity to do one of two things. Either say, oh, hey, good to see you. Hey, can I have a pic? No, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. And you walk away. Or absolutely. What's your name? Sure, let me see the phone. I got long arms, we'll get a good selfie. Uh, wipe your tears away. <laughs> I just do that all the time. I take your, take, it's all right, take a moment. It's, so anyway, um, it's, that's, that's the best part of fame is just making other people feel good and doing, because it's truly the easiest part of my job. And <clears throat> I've had this philosophical talk with a handful of my friends who I trust, who are very famous, who have certain parameters, and I understand those parameters. 
Mine are a little bit more stretched out because you have an opportunity here and it's the easiest part of my job is to take a picture or just say hello. You own a football league. You have a sports drink, a clothing and shoe line, a tequila company. You are in shampoo movies. Company. You have a TV show. Shampoo company. <laughs> Aren't where you the, tired? Where the jokes get bad. You Don't know. you get tired? <laughs> um, as he drinks the energy as drink. As I drink, yes. <laughs> no, see? Sure, yeah. I'm always just fatigued and tired, I think, just you know, being a parent. But I've reached a point in my life where anything that I want to do, and if I feel like it really gets me out of bed, and if I feel like it's the thing that gets me out of bed and I run to it, then I do it. I've reached a point in my life now, if I do something <clears throat> and I enter a new venture, um, I have the resources to make sure I surround myself with people who are a lot smarter than me at what they do. So I could put them in place. And I do really good, Tracy, at going, yes, yes, no, no, yes, no, maybe I'll get back to you. And then they all go to work. What's next? Well, what's next is, well, a few things. It's to continue to build these companies up. And everything touches everything. And whether it be film, television, digital, maybe music. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> there's a tease. <laughs> there's a tease. Um, but I love what I do, and I love all the other things that we're doing. Um, and I think just continue to grow. Because the more we can continue to grow all these companies, and in their small way, and maybe a little bit in their big way, um, it enhances people's lives. All the things that we're doing in that particular way. So it all goes back to that making people feel good, making their lives better, which is something you learned in the ring. Give the audience a good time, make them feel good. Yes, and I learned that right here in Tennessee. And I learned that right here at Channel 5. And I learned that at the flea market here in Memphis. And I learned that in the state fairgrounds. And I learned that in the wrestling in parking lots at used car dealerships. What I learned was always send the people home happy. Always take care of them. The tickets were five bucks, three bucks. During intermission, I would go out <clears throat> to what's called the gimmick table and I would sell Polaroids of myself and a fan for five bucks. <laughs> it's like, you happy with it? They're like, happy, send them home happy. So even at that small scale, small level, it's this idea that you always take care of the people, always send them home happy, always create something that they're gonna enjoy and that will enhance their lives, make it better that they're gonna take with them.